Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, what is Maucha? In this video, we're going to be clearing up the confusion between Maucha and finished tea. This video is going to go under the Tea Master Classes and the Drinking with Friends playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are going to come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, then go click that button right there. I'm here with Celine. Hiya. We're in London. It's, mm. It was a sunny day. Yeah, it was. Um, but as is often the case in London, the weather is looking like it's turning, but we're determined to stick it out. So <clears throat> it might start pouring down with rain. You never know. But that's life in London. It was a beautiful sunny day and summer is starting to creep into London. So it's, it's always a good vibe in the city. <clears throat> and we've just returned back from our tea sourcing trip. We've been to Japan and we've been to China. We've got lots of great footage, lots of great teas, mm. um, and you will be seeing those in the very near future when I get a chance to edit them. We have literally just come back. It's a Saturday and we need to post something. So we decided to do a video about Maochar because we've been, as is always the case when we do tea sourcing, uh, when we travel, we've been mm. drinking a lot of Maochar. Yeah. And it's important that we mm. discuss the differences be between Maochar and finished tea, especially because there's a lot of confusion out there. We've been mm. getting a few questions and some tea sellers are also selling Maochar. Mm. So it's good to know the difference so you can make the right buying choices. Yeah. Essentially, <clears throat> Maochar is semi-finished tea. That's kind of the definition. Um, and so it means that it's tea which has not, not reached the final stage in its progress. Now, there is a key exception to this, right? And I'll talk about that, and that is the raw Pua's Maochars. Right. So I want to be very clear that if a tea seller is selling Maochar raw Pua, then that's a slightly different story, and we'll talk about that in a second. But essentially, Maochar means unfinished tea, semi-finished tea. It's not reached the final phase of production and refinement. Okay, so for different teas, that can mean different things, mm. right? So for some uh, teas, Maochar is literally one step away from finished tea. Maybe all they need to do is sort it, so take away some stems from it. Mm. Um, and as I said, in the case of pu'er tea, Maochar mm. um, can mean pretty much finished tea, but it just hasn't been compressed into a cake, and therefore it's loose. So it hasn't, because traditionally pu'er teas are cake uh, packed, so they're, they're, they are compressed into cakes. And so that's considered the final stage of production. And so loose uh, raw pu'er tea, loose sheng cha, is sometimes often referred to as mao cha. But there's a difference between that mao cha and the mao cha of pu'er, which has not been sorted yet. So they haven't taken away the yellow leaves. Yellow leaves, this is from a different type of tea, but I'll show you yellow leaves look a little bit, oops, spilled it <laughs> everywhere, but look a little bit like this, okay? So, and it's also known as Huang Pian, the yellow leaves of Huang Pian. So, if you find um, that a tea seller is selling raw pua mao cha, the chances are it is finished tea, um, but it's worth double checking with them that they have removed the Huang Pian or the yellow leaves because those are not considered desirable in the finished tea. So, for pua, for raw puas, mao chas are pretty much finished tea. Um, but let's talk about other types of tea. For green teas, you do get mao cha as well. And usually it means it's got stems in and that should definitely be removed. Mm. Um, and in Japan, they call mao cha aracha. So that's the oh, difference. Yeah. Mao cha in China, in Japan, the semi-finished tea is called aracha. What we have here in front of us is some tie guan yin. Mm. There's gonna be a video on Tie Guanyin very soon, a very long video explaining <laughs> everything about Tie Guanyin. Celine has been hard at work, yeah. doing a lot of filming. A lot of learning as well. Yeah, so it's been <laughs> a really interesting, interesting trip. Um, so this is straight from China, um, spring picked, um, literally came with us in our luggage. Mm. And I wanted to show you visually the difference between Tie Guanyin Mao Cha and Tie Guanyin finished tea. So do you wanna hold? Yes. That in front of the camera. Okay, so this is what Tie Guan Yin Mao Cha looks like. So you can see that it's got lots and lots of stems in it. Um, it's still been unsorted. Yeah, you can show them the other one. And this is the same tea, but finished. 
So visually you can really see the difference. It's really been refined. They've taken away all of the stems um, and they've really uh, taken away any broken leaf, any large leaves, and they've just given you exactly what you want to be drinking. Okay, you can show them the stems maybe. Yeah. So this has been what's been removed and that is the stems. <clears throat> so, this is Malcha, finished tea and what is removed. Now the way that they sort the tea out um, can be done by hand for very labor intensive tea guan yin, but mm. it can also be done by machine, very nice fancy machines that kind of shake the tea out and remove the stems. Um, it uh, still needs to go through quite a few times the machines. We've got video of it, we'll show you. Yeah. But um, it can be hand done and traditionally it's hand done. So what's the difference in taste between this tea, the Mao Cha, and the finished Tie Guan Yin? Well, it really depends upon whether or not the Tie Guan Yin is gonna go through a roasting phase. Some Tie Guan Yin, you might not want to roast it, some you do. And when we go to China or Japan or wherever we go tea sourcing, Taiwan, we tend to taste Mao Cha. And the reason for that is because number one, <clears throat> the tea is usually just being finished being made mm. and it's fresh and usually it's sold as Mao Cha to wholesalers or to, to retailers like us. So we have to judge a tea on uh, what they have in stock. If we wait too long, it'll go, the batch will go. So we need mm. to buy on Mao Cha. And the second thing is it allows us to decide if we want to roast it, if we want to leave it unroasted, how much we want to roast it, how long the charcoal roast is, if it's charcoal roasted or air roasted. There's lots of decisions that we make in the buying process of the tea to try and assess from Mao Cha what we want to achieve from mm. it. So it's, it's quite an involved process. Mm. But for this particular Tie Guan Yin, we decided that we enjoyed it um, unroasted. unroasted. Yeah. Mm. So this is a Qingxiang modern style Tie Guan Yin unroasted. Mm. Okay. So in this case, the Mao Cha is pretty close to the finished article because there's not going to be any roasting phase. You can see that this is a very green colored uh, Tie Guan Yin. So all that needs to be done is that these stems need to be removed um, and any kind of twigs, um, large leaves, dust needs to be removed and you're left with the finished article. Mm. So why don't we brew this up? Yeah. So what we're going to do is do a taste difference between Mao Cha and the finished Tie Guan Yin. And remember the only difference really is that it's been sorted. Um, and so it's an incremental difference. Basically these stems do not have as rich a flavor and has a slightly have a slightly different flavor to the leaves. And so if you're brewing up or you're buying 100 grams or 500 grams of a tea, then you want to be spending that money or tasting the leaf and not the stem. The stem doesn't necessarily taste bad, we're gonna taste this one, but it's not gonna be as strong, it's not gonna be as rich, um, and therefore you're kind of spending money on weak tea, essentially, in terms of by weight. So, we're going to taste the difference here. We actually haven't done this. We've been tasting a lot of Mao Cha, so I kind of know what the differences should be, but it's interesting to actually taste the difference. And these stems that are removed here are usually discarded, but in China they sometimes use them for a couple of things. First thing that they'll use them for potentially is like smelling bags, so you can put them in smelling bags. Some people put them in pillows, although I don't find them very comfortable because <laughs> yeah, they're quite true. spiky, but some people put them in pillows so you get the scent of tea while you sleep. Other people, other factories, less um, reputable factories, will actually grind these up um, and use them for tea bags. Um, and so you get your Tie Guan Yin tea bags, which may be a mix of a blend of grinded stems with some uh, ground up leaf. So they'll kind of combine it and they'll make tea bags. So again, tea bags, you never know what you're getting, but chances are um, for a lot of teas, you're gonna be getting ground up stems for the oolongs. Okay. 20 seconds? Yeah, 20 seconds. I forgot the filter. It's all right. It's okay. Just do this one unfiltered as well so that it's a, a good example. Yeah. So as I said, we're going to be doing videos on Tie Guan Yin or a big video on Tie Guan Yin. 
So I'm not going to talk too much about it, but you can take a look here. This is a modern style Qingxiang Zhengwei Xiping Tie Guan Yin. And if none of that made any sense to you, don't worry. It will all make sense. You'll look back at this video after watching the Tiaguan video and you will know everything about what I just said. It will make complete sense to you. It smells really, really good. This is a really excellent tea. Creamy, yolky, and also um, floral. Yeah, okay. The Tiaguan Yin world, there's so, there's so much to learn. You get really lost in it. I didn't really think it was going to be like that, but... Yeah. Tieguan Yin is just in itself a little rabbit hole that you could fall yeah. into um, and you can explore to your heart's content. There is so much. Let's do two cups. Okay, so okay. here we have the Mao Cha. Mao Cha. And then we have the Finished tea. Okay, so visually I can see a difference. Um, very difficult, maybe the camera up here will pick it up. Mm. The Mao Cha mm -hmm. looks a little bit, well, what would you say? It's darker, darker mm. in color, a bit more yorky mm. looking. Whereas the other one is more green, a bit more like a light fluorescent green. Yeah, it's got more clarity, more brightness. It's yeah. a bit more, as you say, fluorescent. Yeah. Okay, so why don't you taste the Mao Cha. Am I meant to talk about it? <laughs> yes, that's what you're here for. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still tired, guys. <laughs> <clears throat> we just, we're quite jet lagged. We literally just arrived um, last night, so we are exhausted, but we need to get one of these videos out. So, okay, you're going to taste the difference. Sorry, I just. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so it's, it's. To me, it's it's fine. It's just a bit more kind of earthy and a bit flat to me, anyway, and a bit bit astringent. Okay, um, but that might be the twist. So you're noticing part. a difference in taste and texture. Yeah. Okay. Especially when you taste the other one next to it. All right. I don't want to be influenced. Why don't you do this blind for me? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, there we go. Okay, so this has got all the elements of the tea that we bought. Mm. It's got a little bit of, it's got the yolk, it's got the, um, the floral honeysuckle notes, and it's got a little kind of sour, um, sour sensation. Mm -hmm. But it's a bit, I'm already prejudging, but it's a little bit flat, a little bit weak, uh, considering the the amount that we put in which was uh, i believe 10 grams yeah for okay give me the other one the for one? 180 180 mil water and this one the texture is a lot thicker the texture is much richer the aftertaste the feeling the coating on your mouth mm. is a lot richer mm. It's really creamy, really yolky. It's just dialed up in terms of richness. I'm going to open my eyes and assume that this one was the finished tea. Yeah. Um, so the difference, and this is what we taste all over in China. We taste the Mao Cha um, because it's always sold as Mao Cha. It's unfinished tea. Mm -hmm. And so you have to kind of um, take all those factors into account and then kind of go, well, this is an amazing Mao Cha. And then you buy it and then they finish it and you hope that it's what you figured out it would be. And it always, I mean, it's never failed us yet. So hopefully yeah. we, we, we keep on a good run on that. Yeah. But it really is a difference, isn't it? Yeah, there, there is a difference. It's a yeah. very clear difference. It's like creamier, richer. It's more, more of the floral notes. It's, it's got more brightness. That's what I find. Yeah, Whereas, and there's definitely a little bit more dryness in this one. Yeah. And so the stems themselves mm -hmm. are not bad tasting. In fact, in, Chi in, in Japan, they um, sell the stem tea as kukicha, yeah, right? True. It's not bad tasting <laughs> tea. It's, <laughs> it's, it's got the same attributes as the finished tea leaf, mm -hmm. but it's weaker, flatter, mm -hmm. less, um, less 
unctuous, less kind of, you know, filling in the mouth yeah. um, and a little bit uh, more stringent. Less oily. But I was going to say, it also depends on the tea that you get because this is still a high quality <laughs> matcha tea guan yin, so it's actually still really nice. It depends but on the quality of the tea and yeah. it also depends on the type of tea that you're tasting. So this is an example of an unroasted tasting. And so mm. the differences are there, but they're not massive. Yeah. However, if we were going to roast this Tia Guan Yin, let's mm. say we tasted the Mao Cha and we said this needs a roast because it's got this sharpness, this astringency on the Mao Cha, then the differences between the finished roasted Mao Cha and the, the unroast, sorry, the finished roasted tea and the unroasted Mao Cha <clears throat> There'd be huge. It'd be a huge difference, yeah. It'd be huge. It would be yeah. you couldn't compare them. Obviously. <laughs> and that's what we're gonna do next. Yeah. So let's finish these. And I want to show you Oh sorry. <laughs> this. So this is Dan Song. But this would apply to any roasted oolong tea. Pretty much. So in the middle here, this is Dan Song Mao Cha. Um, and you can see here that it looks okay, but it's got these little yellow leaves, uh, large yellow leaves in, um, and the color is quite green when you compare it to this finished Dan Song. So this is a finished Dan Song, and for Dan Songs and for Wu Yi uh, Rock Oolongs and for a lot of Tia Guan Yins, mm -hmm. they are roasted, but for Dan Songs and Wu Yi Rock Oolongs, they're always roasted. They're always roasted because the variety and the way that they're produced protect it from the wind. <laughs> uh, the way that they're produced means that if you don't roast it, they will be excessively astringent. They will have too much of this kind of yeah. cutting flatness that just kind of has not a nice texture, leaves your mouth with a slight kind of paracetamol bitterness. Yeah. And just, it's oh just God. not a very nice um, tasting tea. It ha tends to have a lot of the bright notes. Yeah. So it tends to have potentially even more bright notes than the, the than the finished tea. Mm. So you might get a lot of floral, yeah. you might get a lot of those kind of bright, you know, tasty notes, and you yeah. might really appreciate the aroma, but the finish is lacking and it's just very flat. Yeah, it's like less lubricating, it's less um, syrupy mm. and, and more lighter. Yeah. yeah, and so we really struggle <laughs> when we do Dan Song uh, tea sourcing because oh, we have yeah. to taste a lot of Mao Chars oh. and it's sometimes they can be really bright and flowery and nice on the nose, yeah. <laughs> but when you actually taste it, the finish is dry and it's, and, it's, and it's light and it's bitter, but you know that that will change in the roast. Mm. And so we can appreciate the, the brightness and the aromatics and fragrance of the Mao Cha, but we never would buy or sell <clears throat> the Mao Cha to anybody. So this is the Mao Cha, and here you can see the, the yellow leaves that are removed. So this is a few stages away from finished production. It needs mm. to be sorted and then it needs to be roasted in order for it to be called finished Dan Song. And mm. this is the same for most Taiwanese teas and it's the same for um, a lot of other roasted oolongs like Wu Yi Rock oolongs. Yeah. But doesn't... Because um, we had some matcha from the last trip and uh, mm. when it's not roasted, I feel like it loses flavor over time. Yeah. Compared to the yeah. roasted, like when we keep uh, uh, like Milan Xian Dan Song, over time the roast goes down but the sweetness comes up. Yeah, and that's an and absolutely, that's... Like, absolutely uh, correct point. Mm. The roast doesn't just change the flavor, it doesn't just change the finish, mm. but it also means you can keep the tea longer. Yeah. Because that's... the Mao Cha um, unroasted will lose a lot of its fragrance a lot quickly. The, the roast kind of locks in a lot of the mm. flavor. So the roast is part of the kind of preserving, um, making sure that the, the lifespan of the tea is longer. So yeah, that's absolutely right. Okay, should we taste these? Yeah, right. I'll do that. How are we gonna empty these? Mm. <laughs> okay. Into plates, no worries. Yeah? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, we can... No, let's get some guy ones. Okay. You finish talking. Oh. Um, yeah, I was, I was also going to say that <laughs> if you do drink tea really quickly, then probably getting Malta is quite interesting. Um, but definitely find out the price because the price should be lower because obviously there's less, there's less uh, prog process to it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's good to try a bit of everything, I guess, in the end. <clears throat> 
How are you doing? Um, <laughs> Has she managed to fill in the gap? Here it's alright guys, and if you got bored that's fine, I understand. <laughs> so let's uh, break out these little black teapots. Oh, switching it. Switch. Yeah, okay. okay so we're going to taste the finished uh, roasted tea um, and the um, Malcha, this is Oriental Red, this is a very expensive Dan Song, one, of, um, one from my private collection. Um, and that's the other point, Malcha is a lot cheaper to purchase than um, finished tea, obviously. For um, Tie Guan Yin, for the, for the um, unroasted Tie Guan Yin, less of an issue, the price difference is there, but it's less of a price difference. But for something like this, the price difference is huge. It could potentially be even double the price for the finished tea because they have a lot of labor to remove all of the Huang Pian, all of the yellow leaves, um, and to roast the tea, which is a very labor intensive process. And sometimes they do multiple roasts, etc. So it's, it's an involved process and therefore obviously the price goes up. So if you are buying Mao Cha, then you should expect to pay a significantly, significantly lower price than uh, finished tea. That's what I said. <laughs> oh, is that what you said? <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I wasn't listening. But you said it much better than me, <laughs> so it's good. I'll have to check back on that. Oh, sorry. I hope I have enough water. I'm not going to put too much water. That's fine. Do a quick infusion. So, Dan Song, Mao Cha, the smell of it. Oh, it smells incredible. It's like lychees and, and um, orchids and... Yeah, but smell that one. <laughs> so there, so they, the difference is actually, so on the nose, this, as you'd expect, is very, very bright, extremely bright, quite fruity, quite floral. And this one, those kind of fruity floral notes are a little bit more rounded off. It's mm. not got the, the same brightness. But there's a depth and there's a kind of um, richness in the smell of here, uh, of this one, which is definitely, definitely really, really enjoyable. Mm. But it really comes down to taste. So yeah. it's kind of um, a choice. Some people might want to purchase some Mount Chart to taste the difference in terms of the, the, not just the flavor, but also the aroma. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. There's no point in doing a blind tasting on this because yeah. the roast is going to be so clearly evident. Mm -hmm. So this is the Mao Cha here, right? This was the Mao Cha. Yeah. yeah. Hope you guys are enjoying the coming summer. Yeah, summer is arriving, at least in the Northern Hemisphere. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, the difference in color is surprisingly not that much. Not that it? much, no. So that's actually shocked me a little bit because I would expect the, the, the color to be very yeah. different. I hope that this camera is picking it up, but the difference is not that clear. Mm -hmm. um, but what I can see visually is the thickness of the finished tea is a lot more than this one here. This mm. one looks a bit flatter. Okay, let's taste. So let's taste the Mao Cha first. So I'm getting, well, what, what, do you, what are you getting? I, okay, I get very, um, still floral, still fruity, but there's an astringency that comes in the back of my tongue, which like hits you quite instantly. But then you still get the fragrance, but it does go quite quick. Oh, I've just mixed it up. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, this is the mouth <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So, yes, the Mao Cha is um, very fragrant, nice light notes, dry, flat, mm. finishes very much lacking, mm. and there's just not much length to it, and yeah. definitely the texture is, is weaker. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, this is what we're used to tasting. Yeah. So I would normally taste this and go, right, that's actually an amazing, yeah. amazing tea. Doesn't we need to now go through the roast and then yeah. we talk about what kind of roast we want yeah. on it. Let's taste the finished tea. Yeah, because tea. the fragrance is there. You feel like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's a this... super high quality tea, yeah. this tea. Ah. 
round. See, that's the main difference. It just becomes round mm. and creamier. Mm. And it just softens all these hard edges that are a bit bitter and a bit like, oh. It just softens it and then you just get that nice roundness. Yeah. It's less high notes of fragrance and flowers and that's really there, but just more round. Yeah, and I think that that's one yeah. of the one of the kind of differences between how can I say this without sounding condescending? <laughs> I don't <laughs> want to say, but it's one of the differences between kind of new drinkers to tea. Mm. New drink, drinkers to tea tend to focus quite a lot on the, the bright, bright the bright notes. So you think that about people <laughs> focusing on the jasmine. Um, you know, you, yeah, you get yeah. into jasmine, they they go for those bright brighter notes, yeah. and you think about you know those kind of Qingxiang Tieguan Yins, those very bright green Tieguan Yins. Yeah. All those bright notes are really um, are really palatable, really mm. enjoyable. The aromatics make you feel like wow, this is very yeah. fresh. And I think the more you drink tea, the more you you appreciate that totally. You want yeah. that, but you but also you want. want the body. <laughs> the body, exactly. You want the body, you want the depth, you want yeah. the length of finish, you want the richness, yeah. you want the texture to be thicker. It's like instant versus long lasting. Yeah. It's like that kind of thing. Where that's how I started. At the beginning, I was like, oh, really like the fruity, like bright, quite clean tasting teas, like quite sh short finish. Yeah. And now I'm, I, I crave the lengthiness and the oiliness that I get after the drink <laughs> yeah and it's incredible that you taste these teas that it's the same tea because it really tastes very very um it's just it's got a different taste to yeah. it it's it's as you said oily is a great word it mm. kind of really feels lubricating it feels rich it feels longer lasting um and it just feels complete to me um mm. and that's not to say that you don't go for those high notes yeah so the the trick is to try and find tea that, that combines the two yeah. um, and to work on the roast uh, with the roasters to make sure that we get the right roast. Yeah, because you don't want to lose this. No, product. exactly. And you and can sometimes. Yeah, tea you is, totally can. It's like, oh. And sometimes a tea is 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 over roasted, and you can taste it. So yeah. it's not about roasting is better. It's about finding the right level for the leaf to get the perfect balance of top notes, mid notes, mm. bass notes, just like music in the music analogy that we've talked about before, to get a very complete taste and experience because it's not just the taste it's also the way that it feels mm. and the way that it makes you feel you afterwards feel, yeah it's a and, certain groundingness <laughs> and i do actually think that in terms of the roast that changes the, the body sensation as well mm. quite significantly with mao chars you tend to have this kind of very bright but kind of flat and the body experience is a little bit more i would say a bit more caffeinated a bit yeah. more like you know jittery it depends i mean some is just don't feel that much like it's just like a nice kind of fruity drink in a way but it's true like some do give you more of that caffeinated high yeah yeah so there you go the differences between mao cha and finished tea very very clear difference as i said the exception really is for raw pua tea um, so if you see raw pua mao cha <laughs> that pretty much is finished but other than that i would avoid getting mao cha taste the finished tea because that will have all the nuances and all of the flavor texture and body experience that the supplier wants to give you in their finished tea mm. that's it tea heads if you made it to the end of this video then please give the video the thumbs up check out our youtube playlist and let us know if there are any videos that you would like us to make if you're ever in london then come visit us in camden to say hi and taste our wares if you have any questions or comments then please fire them over other than that, this is Celine and I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word. Because nobody, nobody deserves, deserves bad tea. tea. Bye. Bye. <laughs>